So let's go back to the beginning and let's get started with the kicks. Okay. Um, now the first thing that I have is, like I said, four bars of this kick. And all that is, is my kick sample. It was a spark plugin, uh, which is a very cool plugin from Arturia that had like an old school kick. And um, there's, there's a little kick snare thing happening. And at the beginning of this track, I wanted a high pass filter on the drums. I wanted to filter out the kick drum. So rather than put that on my main kick track and automate the filter, what I like to do is just duplicate the track pull up an EQ. In this case, I have a high pass filter at about 85, 86, something like that. We're at 24 dBs per octave and a Q of 0.71. So that gives us this. And of course, you know, we can make this sharper if you want, 36, 24, whatever. But this is what I had to filter out, to give more of an intro feel to the track. So here it is with the high pass. And there it is without it. So here's the kick as it was. I duplicated it from my main track, put up this high pass filter. No automation is needed. If I need to make any changes in volume or EQ, I can literally pull up the plugin and it's done. Turn on the EQ and there's my high pass filter kick. So that's that kick. Moving on to the next kick, I have I have the same loop with no hat and no channel EQ. So this is my full kick that comes in at bar five. So that comes in at bar five. There is a channel EQ and that's, that's not doing anything. I can remove this if I want. Um, I think that's left over from duplicating the track, but that's the full kick drum with no hi-hat. Then, Below that is the same loop with the hi-hat. This is the main driving loop of the track. It's a kick, a snare, and a hi-hat. And what we can do if we're dealing with frequency is we can just approach this um, in a couple different ways. As a whole entire loop, which we have, Or if you got to the mixing phase and you're like, you know what, I want control over the kick, the snare, and the hi-hat, what we can do is duplicate that track, all right, and split this up a little bit. So let's go into one loop here. And I'm gonna get the, we have this crash in the beginning. So I'm gonna step away from that for a second. And the next one is just a clean kick hat and snare loop. So let's take out the kick. So all I'm gonna do is make a cut at each one of these beats. And if we zoom in a little bit more, we see the hi-hat and I'm gonna make another cut on the eighth notes right there. And Let's copy down the kick, and I'm not going to copy any automation. And let's copy down these hi-hats. Let's duplicate this. And now let's do the two and the four, which is our snare. Yes, it's over top the kick, but that's okay for right now. And those logic users that may see this pop up, or even if you're not a logic user wondering what this pop up is, it's I have automation on this loop and it's asking me if I'm gonna copy it down. Yes, you can click don't show me this again, but believe it or not, I actually like to be asked this because sometimes I wanna copy it and sometimes I don't. In this case, I don't. So I'm not too fussed by that, um, but I do see it. And if, we, if I pull up the automation, you can see the automation there on the track. Okay, so the automation really is right here. So that's why I didn't copy it because I don't really care about it for right now. So now let's look at what we just cut out, which is the kick, hi-hat, and snare. And this time I'm only soloing this first duplicate track, which should be our kick. Okay, so it has the snare right here. So I'm gonna get rid of those, 
copy this over. And there's our kick. Now it has a little uh, pop at the end of it. So I can come up here and fade that out. And that's just by lassoing this and putting on a, a batch fade. You can also bring up the fade tool, or if you're in another DAW, you can, you know, use whatever it, however it does fade outs, which are all pretty much the same. You can just grab it and create a little fade out to get that, that pop out of there. So now we've got the kick by itself. And so while the loop is cool, maybe when we're producing the track, we pulled in this loop, we liked it, we edited it, we time corrected it. But now that we're getting into the engineering part, we're getting into the frequency spectrum. Uh, we want maybe to have individual control of each element of that loop. So I just cut that out. So here's the kick. Let me get the inspector stuff hidden here. So now I've got the kick drum and now we can focus on just the kick drum. And I'm going to pull up a channel EQ. And there are primarily three areas of the kick that we want to think about with focusing in on the kick with frequency spectrum. The first is the low end, right about 80 hertz. That's where you're going to get that low end punch and thump. That's the first area. So do you want to raise it a little bit? Do you want to accentuate some of that low end? Starting at around 80 or 100 hertz. Shelving EQ is typically what we would use there. The next area for a kick, and really a lot of instruments, is around the 370 hertz range with a very sharp Q factor. This is the mud, muddy area of a lot of sounds. When you have a muddy mix, a lot of it is too much information or too many things happening in that 350, 60, 70 range, you know, 350 to 400, right around there. Okay, somewhere in here, if you have a, a muddy sound that doesn't have a lot of clarity, you may want to um, look at that frequency spectrum. With a kick, I always look at this area and a lot of times remove as much as 9, 10, even 15 dB in that muddy area. All right, and that's gonna help add definition in the case of the kick drum. And then the next area is perhaps a parametric band, not super wide um, with a Q, but you know, medium wide bandwidth parametric band at around one or two K, somewhere around here. And that's going to be that top end snap or punch or, you know, clarity and definition of the kick. So these are kind of the main areas that I think about addressing when I go individually to a kick. And I actually have a preset that I've saved over time. And I have these where I dialed, you know, my favorite preset in for most kicks that I like to start with. And then I saved it as basic kick, which is right here. So if you're in this EQ or if you're in most plugins, you can save a setting. And that's what I did, just did. I just saved it and called it basic kick. So if I pull that up, you can see what I did. And I add a little bit more, but let's go through each one. All right. So I've got this parametric band right here. And I have also a high pass filter. I've got this parametric band, which is notching out that mud range. I've got this on my snappiness and I even have some top end. So this is the full EQ kickstart. So now I'll play this and I'll AB this EQ kickstart setting on the kick. So what we've done is we've cleaned up some of the subharmonics, all right, filtering them out 24 dB per octave around 30 hertz, a little extra oomph and push at 80, really cleaning up at 370. Maybe we can widen this a little bit. Um, and, and to hear this, what we can do is actually boost it up. And when you're using EQ, that's a, a technique called seek and destroy, where you seek out the annoying frequency or seek out whatever it is you're trying to remove or fix in this case, and then we remove it. So if I play this, and do you hear that? It's very nasally, it's very annoying, really, when you boost it up that high. But the reason why we're boosting it is to really hear the frequencies that are there. And then once we get it to where it's really the most obnoxious, which is the area that we want to focus on, then we remove it.
So there's that little uh, drop at 350 to clean up the kick. And then we have our uh, 2K punch right there. It's about two and a half dB, and you can really hear that adding some clarity. And then the ultra top end at 6K, just to add some air. I, I don't do this all the time. This, this is my starter setting, so I don't always add this. This is without it. Really, the deciding factor there is whether you like the hi-hat that's on there. Okay, so this is kind of a kick that has a hi-hat because it came from the loop. It's not the end of the world. It sounds good. We like it. We don't need to, you know, get that out for any reason. But the question is, do you want to accentuate that a little bit with this top end or decentuate it or not accentuate it at all? So if I play this, I can boost it up a little bit just to give a little attention to that hi-hat or we can even remove it to dull that and make it sound, you know, softer. And really the, the choice is yours. It's personal preference. So I'm gonna leave it for now. I'll leave it, you know, about one and a half, something like that. And there's our kick. And you can really hear the definition, um, you know, once that EQ is applied. Now it's worth mentioning as it relates to all processing, all right, a lot of times, especially when you're dealing on a specific instrument, whether it's compression or in this case EQ, the processing, the processing that we do is very subtle. Usually it's very subtle on individual tracks. This is phase one, going through each track, looking at it individually. We're not worried about the context of how this kick sits in the mix just yet, we'll get there. This is only how does this kick sound best by itself? How, how can we fix the sound? Do we need to pump up or boost a little bit in the 80 range, remove some of the mud, add some definition? That's what we're talking about here. It shouldn't sound dramatically different. If it were dramatically different, just from EQ, it's actually a different sound. We've already produced this track. We like the general sound of this kick in this snare, in this hi-hat, in this loop. We've just cut up the kick to separate it. What we're doing now is we're subtly shaping it to clean it up, okay? So, so the point is you can hear the difference of how it's adding clarity to the kick, but it's not like record break, it's not groundbreaking. It's not like a huge difference that you say, whoa, that sounds so much different. That's not what we're going for. We're going for a subtle change. And the key is that subtle change on the kick, subtle change on the hi-hat, Subtle changes through each individual track, if we have 40 tracks or 30 tracks in a mix, all that little subtle change adds up to collectively a lot of change, which hopefully gets you to a cleaner, more concise, more glued together mix. Not through drastically addressing one sound, but by cleaning up subtly each individual sound. So that's kind of the world we're dealing in right now. So I'm gonna play it one more time, A, B this one last time, and then we'll move on. So I hear a subtle difference, but it's definitely cleaned up and it's attacking most of those areas that I like to either accentuate or deal with as it relates to a kick. So there's my kick uh, start setting.